Nostalgia. We're all familiar with the feeling, a certain longing for the past. These feelings of reminiscence can come and go or last for some time. There's something euphoric that accompanies thinking about moments when we experience the state of complete bliss. Such fond memories can also be the product of misinterpretation. For instance, there may be childhood shows we think of now and reminisce over. However, when we go back to watch them, we realize that they are not as amazing as we made them out to be. This may be because we developed unreasonable expectations, which ties into the fact that we were a different version of ourselves in the past. Your old childhood self may have enjoyed a show about shapes and weirdly animated animals, but in developing, we have come to like shows that incorporate more complex elements into the mix. Nevertheless, some things cannot live up to our unsurmountable expectations that have been reinforced by our longing for times that once were. Before we dive any deeper on everything nostalgia, let's briefly go over what exactly it is and the feeling brought upon by it. So what is nostalgia? Nostalgia is a feeling characterized by affection for the past. The feeling can provoke negative emotions for those who wish to return to a certain time. Others may respect the feeling for what it is. They develop a certain fondness for the past, but do not let it absorb them and detract attention from the present. When in a nostalgic state, our brains act as a filter against negative memories and promote positive ones. Additionally, different parts of the brain increase their metabolic activity when in such a state. Regions such as the frontal lobe, limbic system, paralimbic areas, and midbrain all experience an increase in blood flow that stimulates greater metabolic activity. Different forms of sensory stimuli are what tend to elicit a nostalgic state. Music, a certain aroma, or a specific yeah, taste like are all chicken. distinct forms of sensory information that can propagate a yearning for the past. Although we know what can cause us to be nostalgic, why exactly do we feel this way? Well, we will have many experiences throughout our lives. With this, there are times when we must smell the roses. What I mean by that is that we reflect on what it is we have experienced. These retrospective moments often accompany monumental accomplishments. Someone who may have just recently graduated from college may gather some high school friends to look over the yearbook from years prior. This dive into the past reignites foreign emotions that appear to be so familiar. They're familiar as they were previously experienced, and this college graduate will now relive them. We often look at the past through rose-colored glasses. Times seem to have been better than they really were. This is similar to when anticipation is better than the actual event one is anticipating. Somewhere along the line, our expectations grow to an extent that will remain unparalleled. The same happens with our experiences. We may look over them more fondly because of personal bias or simply because those times were genuinely one of the best ones in our lives. Nostalgia can be said to have negative or positive effects, but one quality remains constant in most cases. The feeling evokes a warm, positive sense of familiarity and comfort. Why exactly is this the case? As we learned earlier, some parts of the brain experience increased blood flow and metabolic activity. Many of the areas that experience this change are part of what's known as our reward centers. The hippocampus, amygdala, and prefrontal cortex are some of the parts involved, just to name a few. A study by Oba and colleagues sought to evaluate the brain of individuals while they felt nostalgia. This was done by showing the participants visual stimuli that propagated the flood of these positive emotions. What researchers found was that regions responsible for memory, as well as reward areas in our brains, both activate when a person experiences nostalgia. This link between memory and our reward centers is what causes the positive feeling. Dopamine is the main neurotransmitter released when our brains reward us, but several other chemicals are released as well to provide us with that overall positive feeling. Researchers discovered two additional pieces of information that are important to note. For one, chronological remoteness is necessary for a memory to elicit a sense of nostalgia. This simply means that the memory must be one of the distant past. Additionally, they must also have importance in terms of an emotional or personal aspect. The greater the activation experienced by the memory and reward centers, the more potent nostalgia would prove to be. It's as if nostalgia makes an individual more optimistic and fends off negative emotions. Nostalgia itself can be broken down into two different types. Moreover, these two types can produce significantly different outcomes. The first one we will look over is restorative nostalgia. This one is the most positive of the two. Essentially, a person experiences restorative nostalgia when they use their feelings to make the most out of future events. A past event is associated with a positive feeling that ignites an individual with motivation for all that is to come. This differs from reflective nostalgia. Dissecting the term, one can already understand that the second type encompasses deeper thought. 
a person experiencing reflective nostalgia does not feel as if the present can compare to the past. They feel as if their best days are truly behind them. Hence, these two types of nostalgia differ based on one's outlook on the present. In restorative nostalgia, a person is joyful about their memories, and they use this as fuel to foster an even brighter future. Conversely, those who become more reflective have a gloomier forecast. It is difficult for them to have a positive outlook on the future when they feel as if the best days really are behind them. Both types of nostalgia can occur depending on the memory we think of. A person may feel restorative nostalgia when having graduated from college. They may begin to remember their first days filled with anxiety that have evolved to their current triumph that required complete perseverance. A graduate will be moving on from one stage of life to another, be it a transitional phase. They must begin to put their degree to work and construct the career they wish. Conversely, reflective nostalgia can occur in more grim instances. The loss of a loved one, for example, is an event that leaves a lasting sting that subsides with time but never disappears. This feeling can become more impactful if a person begins to overthink their circumstances. Overthinking is often what occurs if one becomes too reflective. In the case of the loss of a loved one, a person does not even desire to think of the future if they cannot create endless memories with the one they loved. After all, what places meaning in these memories is the fact that only a finite amount can be created. It all comes down to one's thought process, as someone else who experienced the same grief may eventually use it as fuel to make the most out of every moment and relationship. Although we can freely ponder over nostalgic events today, the same could not be said for our past. Nostalgia originates from two Greek words, nostos meaning homecoming and algos meaning pain. It was originally thought of as a condition in which individuals felt homesick. Johannes Hofer was the Swiss physician who came up with the term we are all familiar with today. There were varying interpretations of what caused nostalgia in the 17th and 18th centuries. Hofer, for example, believed several animal spirits to be vibrating in the brains of those afflicted with nostalgia. Another physician, J.J. Schweitzer, thought people became nostalgic due to changes in atmospheric pressure. These early interpretations of the conditions were example of the scientific method. Scientists developed hypotheses and evaluated if they were true or not. Today we are more familiar with what nostalgia is, but the same cannot be said for our past. In fact, nostalgia maintained its status as a psychiatric disorder well into the mid-20th century. This was mainly because of the symptoms it would produce, anxiety, depression, and insomnia being some of the most common. Throughout this entire video, we've looked over nostalgia in terms of the positive emotions felt over a past event, but what about the present? Can we feel nostalgia for the present? It almost sounds impossible, since this would disobey the chronological remoteness necessary for such emotions to be evoked. Up until now, we have looked at nostalgia from a personal standpoint, this being the fond memories individuals have of their past. This means those who feel personal nostalgia do so for events they have already lost. What I mean by lost is that these experiences cannot be regained. They are lost in the vast terrain that is our past. What we have yet to lose is our present because we can still influence it. Anticipatory nostalgia considers the fact that we can change the present. This type of nostalgia is defined as when an individual misses the present before it can even be considered the past. In other words, those experiencing anticipatory nostalgia are not living in the present and observe it as if they are in the future. They understand the present will eventually turn into past events and they cannot bring themselves to take advantage of their current moment. This distorts the present to some extent, as a person can begin to reminisce over current events as ironically as it sounds. A great example of this is the current moment. Many students are currently on summer vacation, but they are already in their last months of break depending on their school district or university. As the first days of the semester approaches, students begin to prematurely reminisce over their break. Even if they still have a week left, they cannot believe that the first day of school is right around the corner. Anticipatory nostalgia then kicks in and students may not be able to enjoy the present to the fullest. Essentially, this type of nostalgia acts as a defense mechanism. Now that we are mindful of what the term is for when we find ourselves in such instances, how exactly is it that we can become more conscious of living in the present? This is a question many have struggled to answer. There have even been rules created to simplify the concept, such as the 1990 principle. There is a social media rule with the same title, but we are using the 1990 principle in reference to time. This principle tries to optimize how we use our time by contending that we should only use 1% of our time to think over the past, 90% of our time to live in the present, 
and 9% of our time to plan for the future. It seems simplistic in nature, but it can be difficult to allot these specific bouts of time to their respective spaces. Even if we are cognizant that 90% is the best amount of time to spend in the present, how exactly can we do so? The truth is, we already know the answer. Sometimes we want to take advantage of a moment so much that we do not realize how we are limited in our capacity to do so. To enjoy the moment simply means to live in it. To be rid of all thoughts that relate to other spaces and time and simply notice the present for what it is. Even if we want to stop time and only be in the present, this is just impossible to do so. Time is a fleeting concept and it will pass us by if we continue to dwell on it. We may be at the worst point in our lives, or the best one, and one thing will remain certain. Time will continue to pass, and a new era will ensue. Thus, we must not dwell on our ability to perfectly capture the moment, as this does the opposite of what we desire. As simple and difficult as it sounds, all it takes is being present. Once the present has crossed the path to join past events, it is then that we can begin to feel nostalgic over such a time. The positive effects of nostalgia should not be forgotten. Even though the 1990 principle only allows for 1% of your time to be dedicated to past events, you live your life as you wish to. There are stages in life where we will be more nostalgic. I imagine this will be more prevalent in the later stages due to all the memories we will have accumulated by them. The past can be a place that fuels your future with optimism, but it can very well be the opposite as well. You are the one that assigns power to such events, so try to use them as learning experiences that ignite positivity. The future is to come, but the past will always be there. With all this in mind, do not neglect the present. You are stronger than the warm, alluring nature brought upon by nostalgia, so use it as motivation.